Welcome to the Dennis Insider. We're going to talk about bone formation today, uh, part of the introduction to dental science. So it's bone formation. So let's say overall, um, what is our outline for the lecture today? So we'll talk about what are the different types of bone. Then we will talk all the all the um, components of bone. Then we will talk about the bone cells, how the bone bone forms, particular in the oral cavity or for dentist, uh, alveolar process, cortical plates, maxilla mandible, and the TMJ. Um, so at the later part we will talk about dental re related, and in the beginning we will talk about the basic components of bone. Um, okay, so uh, we have a, we will start with the types of bone, and um, as you can see here, all face and skull bones, uh, the flat bones, they they grow by intramembranous ossification, whereas the long bones, uh, such as your pinky, um, your arm, leg, everything, uh, which has a diaphysis and epiphysis grows by endochondral bone formation. Um, once again, we will not cover mature bone. So what is compact bone? Compact bone oh, is made up of dense outer bone, and there's always a spongy bone inside, or the trabeculae, we like to call it. So uh, dense bone always outside, and inside you have the spongy bone. Um, the layers are periosteum, which is made up of two layers. So you have your fibrous. So you have your fibrous layer, and then you have the cellular uh, layer, fibrous and cellular layer in the periosteum. Then you have the endosteum, which um, has all of the cells, basically osteon, in the Hergen system and the Volksmann canal. Um, you can compare this to the perichondrium in the cartilage um, because it does not have an endochondrium. There is no such word. So we only have a perichondrium in the cartilage. Okay, so here we have a picture. As you can see, uh, the maxilla mandible, they form by the intramembranous or, and endochondral bone formation, but mostly it's intramembranous bone formation. Only the condyles. Uh, mostly formed by endochondrial uh, in the oral cavity. Our skull is intramembranous, the cranial vault. So your two bone types, intramembranous and endochondrial ossification. You have the compact bone with the osteons, and the osteons have the haversion system. These canals um, that contain blood vessels, nerves, they always run parallel to the bone, whereas you have Volksmann canal for nutrients or communicates perpendicularly to the long axis or perpendicular to the haversion system. Now bones are calcified uh, extracellular matrix. They have three cells, osteoblast, site, and clast. Uh, bone is vascular, uh, un uh, unlike cartilage, which is avascular. Spongy bone is made up of the trabeculae, uh, which has the bone marrow, and you always have spongy bone in between two dense bones. Now let's talk about long bones. Long bones, the most, this is going to, going to be from outer to inner. Um, so outer to inner. So the most outer we have is the periosteum, uh, which has the fibrous layer and the cellular osteoblast. Then we have the osteoid, which is uncalcified. Then we have external circumferential lamellae inside. We have the osteons with the central canal. We have interstitial lamina in between each osteon or surrounding each osteon. And then we have interstitial circumferential lamina and then finally spongy bone all the way in the center. You will find osteocytes and osteoblast in both periosteum and endosteum. Whereas osteoblast usually um, you find them along the trabeculae of new bone. And then osteoclast always are found in endosteum. So let's talk. look at a picture to better understand this. Um, as you can see here, so this is our long bone. We have the diaphysis in the center, 
we have two epiphyses on the either end. So first we have the periosteum with two layers, fibrous and cellular. Then we have the external circumferential. Here we have internal circumferential. In between that we have these osteon bone cells with the hervergent system that runs per and that runs perpendicular or runs uh, in parallel with the long axis, whereas the Volksmann canal here in blue that I am highlighting, they connect uh, our outside periosteum to the inside periosteum as well as the Volksmann, uh, the aversion system. Uh, in between each osteon, you will find this area that is the interstitial lamina, and then most internally, you will find the spongy bone. If we look at each osteon, we can see here you have concentric lamellae inside each osteon, uh, which has the canaliculi as well as the uh, lacunae with osteocytes. So you see these osteocytes and the canaliculi that provide the nutrients. So osteocytes and lacunae um, and canaliculi. So that is the structure of bone. Let's keep going. So what are the cells of bone? We have osteoblast, which uh, come from osteoprogenitor cells. And then we have osteocyte that come from osteoblast. And the only difficult one in my, in my, in my thinking is that osteoclast come from monocytic cells uh, because they dissolve bone. Um, once again, we have different types of monocytic cells. I think I had a mnemonic in the other video. It is the M3 code. So that is your mac monocytes, macrophages. Um, we have a few others that I cannot think of right now, but um, Langerhill cells, dendritic cells, uh, osteoclast, and then Kuffer cells. So that is what M3 code. So we have osteo. Osteoblasts that come from osteoprogenitor, they form this uncalcified osteoid, which gets calcified. You find the osteoblast both in endosteum and peri periosteum. As well as osteoclast, you find it in endosteum and periosteum. Only thing is osteocyte, you always find it inside the matrix. So osteocytes are always stuck in the lacunae. Um, they communicate with the canaliculi, as shown in the figure uh, earlier. And then if you have death of osteocyte, that can also cause resorption of the bone. So you don't really need osteoclast necessarily for bone resorption. So osteoclast work by, um, they have a proton pump, uh, which releases hydrolytic enzymes and uh, basically makes a pool of acid with the ruffled border and the bone. And that pool of acid will melt, will basically dissolve our enamel, our bone, and all the proteins that are involved. Uh, lysosome release hydrolytic enzymes at the pH of 4.5 in these uh, Hauschip lacunae. That is the, the term for this, Hauschip's lacunae. And I will show you a picture of that. Um, osteocytes, on the other hand, uh, they're basically maintaining bone, so they have these dendritic processes um, that in the canaliculi that contact other cells, so that's your zona adherence. Um, osteocytes have small RER and Golgi apparatus because they're just maintaining bone, whereas osteoblast will be will have more. It's it's more active. Then uh, we have two types of bone formation. We talked about endochondrial. Endochondrial, as the word suggests, you need a cartilage template. So always uh, this will involve your hyaline cartilage that gets replaced so let's talk about this so you have your hyaline cartilage that gets replaced and becomes woven bone woven bone is very unstable so that will become compact lamellae compact bone um, we know that all bone all long bones have three ossification centers If you have a long bone, you have ossification center in the middle, diaphysis. You have ossification center up top at the epiphysis. 
and then there's another component called the FFCO plate. You find it at the epiphyses. Uh, makes sense. And that is what uh, de determines your height. So when that stops growing, you will stop growing. Um, there is no central canal and there is no uh, Volksmann canal. No central canal and no Volksmann canal in these long bones. Uh, intramembranous ossification, on the other hand, um, you do not need a cartilage template. So intramembranous, no cartilage. And that is what we care about. That's our dentist bone uh, or the flat bones, uh, such as of the skull, as well as the maxilla and the mandible. And we know the only thing up top in endochondral is that you have the condyles. I'll write it other way. Um, endochondral only forms the condyle. Whereas intramembranous forms everything else. Uh, so the steps is that you have condensing mesenchyme with the capillaries in the soft tissue. And osteoblasts start depositing osteoid directly on that mesenchyme, which is wrapped around these capillaries. And once you trap these osteocytes in the periosteum, uh, you will start getting growth or ossification from that point. So you get this bony trabeculae formed by mineralization. You form the spongy bone. Spongy becomes compact bone at the, at the outer surface. And uh, the spongy bone, a flat, we call it diploid. So that is intramembranous or the dentin dentist bones. Um, next, we have the alveolar process, which has contains both compact and spongy. Alveolar bone proper, also known as the cribriform plate. Cribriform plate has a layer of uh, bundle bone, which is immature, basically. And uh, that bone, immature bone, is where um, your PDL fibers or Sharpie fibers will attach. And uh, another concept is that um, alveolar bone or the lamina dura is what we see in the x-ray and that tells us about bone loss. So once again we have the alveolar bone, then we have the trabeculae or spongy bone, and then the compact bone, the cortical plates. Um, alveolar bone is surrounded surrounds a root and attaches a PDL. Um, you have the supporting alveolar bone is the cortical plate and inside is always the spongy bone. Uh, bundle bone is the immature bone where PDL or Sharpie fibers attach. And then uh, we know that the osteoclasts cause scalping of the bone with age and they can change your alveolar crest socket or alveolar socket. Um, cortical plates are compact bone, which form the inner and outer alveolar process. So if we talk about cortical plates, they are the thickest in the back in the molar and thickest in the mandibles. Your mandibular molars, uh, cortical plate is the most thickest. Um, talk about maxilla and mandible, um, made up of mostly intramembranous bone formation, but there is some endochondral happening there. Uh, intermembranous bone formation starts at the mental protuberance and moves back uh, posteriorly. Endochondral remodeling uh, occurs, so it grows back as it dies at the front. So what it's trying to show is that if you had a mandibular ramus here, let's say these, this is where the teeth are. Um, so you have growth that is happening in the front the anterior surface it's growing and you have osteoclast activity in oh i think i did it backwards let's look at yes so yeah i did it backwards so you have a osteoclast activity subtraction in the anterior and you have osteoblast activity in the posterior of the ramus of the mandibular ramus So that is everything about bone. We mostly cared about intramembranous bone formation because those are the dentist bone or the flat skull bones. Then we have um, the structure of bone as shown here. Uh, so we will go from most outer periosteum where we find both osteoclast and osteo, um, osteocytes. 
osteoblast as well as the osteoclast. You find it in the endosteum and periosteum. Um, you have the aversion system that is running per, uh, with the long axis, and you have the Volksmann canal that links each aversion canal. Um, once again, bone is vascularized. You have the central canal, which is also called aversion canal, and you have the preferred canal called the Volksmann canal that run 90 degree um, with the aversion system. Here we can see um, that we have some osteoblast and osteoclast that are found both in the periosteum and endosteum. Um, osteocyte is the only one that gets calcified or gets stuck in the lacunae. So as you can see in the middle, we have osteocytes. And in the outside, we can either find osteoblast or osteoclast in the periphery. Here is the mechanism of osteoclast. Um, they have a pH, these lysosomes, uh, at their optimal pH of 4.5. Integrin binds uh, to vitronectin in the bone, and it creates a circumferential seal or a pool underneath in the bone. And um, lysosomes and other structures are able to basically, uh, in that space, um, have a proton pump that shoots acid. Uh, releases hydrolytic enzymes and kills the bone as well as all the bacteria. So lysosomes release hydrolytic enzymes into that microenvironment at the pH of 4.5 for hydrolytic enzymes. Here we can see once again uh, you have the endosteum, you have osteocytes and lacunae that are stuck. Um, this is your osteocytes once again. And then here you find in the periphery osteoblast uh, and some osteoclast, and it has formed um, this kind of pool, and it might do resorption right there. Um, in dental related, we have the alveolar bone. Uh, as you can see, it's made up of two cortical plates, uh, one on both, either side. You have spongy bone in the middle. Uh, we call this portion the alveolar bone or the alveolar bone proper where the tooth is sitting. So once again, alveolar bone is made up of alveolar bone proper and the bundle bone. Uh, we call that lamina dura in the radiograph. So that is your most internal, number one, most internal where the tooth is sitting or the socket. So if you do extraction and you look into that socket, you will see small holes. And those holds what represents Volksmann canal. Number two, we have the trabecula or the spongy bone, and then outside we have the compact cortical plates. Uh, so compact inside, and then alveolar bone. Um, it's also called cribriform plate. Once again, here lamina dura. It's these white lines that are forming around the root, and that tells us uh, bone loss. And the changes in osteoblast and osteoclast activity in the jaw. As I was saying, you deposit in the posterior ramus, so you have osteoblast activity, and you resorb in the anterior, so you have osteoclast activity. That is how the jaw grows. And once again, you can have changes in the alveolar socket uh, due to age. Uh, you have some aging periodontal ligaments with aging bone, and then, of course, you will have some resorption that causes the scalloping of the bone. And the reversal line is basically when the bone is bone is dying, uh, opposite of uh, appositional growth or, or a growth line. I will um, conclude with the questions right after this.